I want to talk today about intuitions. Now, intuitions are really, really interesting. Great morning, world. Welcome to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast with your host, Dragon. Great morning, world. This is your boy, Dragon, with a Monday Rise Up. This is being taped on the 24th of May, which is just crazy. Got a new format going now. Um, and this is just coming from uh, those that are smarter than Dragon and advising me. Um, we are no longer streaming to all of the social media channels. We're only going to be specifically streaming live for the live show to my YouTube channel, which is Rise Up With Dragon and our Rise Up With Dragon fan page and that is at rise up with dragon and the reason why we're doing that is because it's more efficient and that's the way we're going to do it so great morning everybody uh, as always very excited about this and we're going to jump right into today's rise up which is called the intuition illusion and i'm really excited about that shout out to some people that are forming on clubhouse and you can come in for the live interactive after party and you can find me on Clubhouse at Makes Sense. So make sure that you come on in there because what's really fun after we do a rise up is to find out what's going on in that wet piece of meat in your skull. So very excited. Just want to say um, this week on Thursday, and that will be Thursday. Let's get our handy dandy calendar out because I just take things day by day. That's Thursday the 27th and at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Coming from the other side of the planet, we're going to be interviewing somebody that is just a rock star, and that's the great Nir Ayel, and he is the author of two just unbelievable national bestsellers, the first one being Hooked and the second one being Indistractable. So I'm going to have the opportunity and blessing of interviewing him. I've read his book. I've listened to it on audio, Audible, and um, I know that just hundreds of people have kind of taken that lead and read it as well. So this is going to be really awesome. Looking forward to that interview. Um, so make sure that you tune in for that. So today, um, in today's Rise Up, it's interesting. You know, I, I'm, I'm constantly talking about this interface response system, this idea of working on controlling how we respond to things, you know, so that just keeps coming up. It just keeps coming up in my my practice of Buddhism and Stoicism, you know, it's like all of these philosophies, if you have one, you know, just as a side note, a lot of people don't have philosophies of life. You know, a lot of people are just running a program based on what they've received from outside in, and they don't actually have their own philosophy about life. So when you start practicing this stuff, and that's what the Rise Up with Dragon show is about, it's help, it's just to help you get unstuck, unlocked from your mental prison via you know, learning some new ways of looking at things, you know, unpacking things and getting different opinion about things. But a lot of people are walking around, they don't really have a philosophy of life. So as I con constantly look at that, it just keeps on reminding me that the work I'm doing here and in my book with this idea of the interface response system, um, meaning this system upon which we actually reclaim control of our lives and and the controllables, and that is how we respond to things, not trying to control the things that happen out of our control, controlling the things that we do. So this idea of how we perceive things and how we um, draw to conclusions and things like that is always fascinating to me. So today, I'm stepping into a realm that's very familiar with that, um, but at the same time, it's like a different approach. Um, and I wanna talk today about intuitions. Now, intuitions are really, really interesting. When you look at intuitions, and I see people starting to figure out the, uh, where, the, where the live is coming, so that's pretty cool. Everybody will get used to it. Everybody's like, where's the live right now? I'm on this page. And they're falling victim and prey to it. I'm going to start getting texts from people saying, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. I'm going to say, well, I did that, and I gave you the opportunity to react to it differently. Um, so we're going to talk about intuitions because if you think about it, you know, 
look at your intuitions and intuitions can be defined in various ways. But when I look at intuitions, I think of them and I'm just coming raw right now thinking about it. When I look at my intuitions, it's like my gut, my, my gut feeling about something, my sixth sense, you know, when, when something happens or someone happens, I, I very often use my intuitions to make the right choice rather than the wrong choice. So that's what's fascinating because if we learn to like check our gut, follow our heart, check our gut, um, what ends up happening is that we assume that our intuitions on things or about things are right. But if we further peel back the onion and look deeper into intuitions, we have to recognize that maybe our intuitions have been programmed to be that way. Maybe if you get a gut feeling or a sixth sense about something, maybe that is a side effect and symptom of your program. So here's case in point. Let's say I have a programming in my mind, which I always did about marriage and divorce, right? So let's say, you know, at the age of 11, I, I saw my parents get divorced and then I got divorced. So my program has its own way via the experiences that, you know, I consumed to create that program. My program has its own way of, of looking and perceiving relationships and divorce. So if I come into a relationship with that program, doesn't it make sense that I might get this gut feeling about someone that might not necessarily be true, but it's jaded by my past experience. So that's an example of the fact that my intuition might be wrong. So my question to you today, just to ponder is if you look at your intuitions in life, look at, look at how you're calling shots in life and, and making decisions about when's the right time to do things. You know, should I go? Should I stay? Is this a good idea? Should I, should I deal with this person? Should I let them in? Should I let them out? Is this a good opportunity or a bad opportunity based on your intuitions? Do you think that your intuitions are moving you forward? Or could they potentially in this new space that we're unlocking today, be holding you back? So that's what we're going to unpack. So let's go into this. And as a quick reminder, when I do these rise ups, um, I actually have my journal entry, you know, in my book and in the 15 days of discipline that's coming out. And side note, if you want to get involved in that free giveaway for the 15 days of discipline, just go to my Instagram at rise up with dragon and hit me up in the DM. Obviously, I'd love it if you follow me and I'll always interact. I try to respond to everybody, but hit me up in the DM and just write the word in capital letters discipline and we will get you signed up for that free giveaway, which is a full overview of the entire course. You could actually use that and completely shift your life. Um, so let's get into in, uh, intuitions. So an intuition is when we have, we have a powerful sense that something is true without necessarily having an awareness or full understanding of the reasons behind the feeling. So let me just read that again, because I really want to lock into what intuitions are. An intuition is when we have a powerful sense that something is true without necessarily having an awareness or full understanding of the reasons behind the feeling. So what that means is we get a gut feeling. We don't necessarily know why. And I know everybody understands what that is. When you walk into a room and you just say, I feel a bad vibe. Don't know why, but I feel a bad vibe. So that's what I mean without understanding the reasons behind it. So it may or may not represent something true about the, the situation, the scenario, or the world. Intuitions are directly associated with and impacted by as well as reinforce, reinforce things that reinforce our beliefs. So think about that for a second. What I'm saying is, is that intuitions are directly associated with and impacted by our beliefs. So that's, we're going back to that mother, father, teacher, preacher, that, that, uh, that whole programming scenario that happened outside in as, as, you know, children up until this day. And remember, mother, father, teacher, preacher is one thing, but then there's an S M F T P S and that's society. And that's the highlight reel. So always making sure that people become aware of what they're consuming on a regular basis, because the things that we consume all day are actually creating the scenario of the program, right? It, that, that repetition of the, of the consumption. So let's get, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do right now 
is I'm trying to speak for the first time right into the microphone because we're using the Rodecaster Pro and I'm, I've been told by uh, everyone it's important to have great sound quality. So therefore, in my observation, our intuitions become a practice ground. This is cool. A practice ground for our beliefs and our beliefs have been installed and programmed often by others, very often. So this means that our intuitions may be off so that's just all I want you to entertain today is that your gut feeling, which we should always check. You know, one of the problems I think a lot of people face is they try to make decisions with their minds and their minds are just a reflection of the program. So what I always say is harmonize your mind with your heart, check your heart, check your gut. They always know. But what I'm entertaining today, and I know that this complicates things, is perhaps your mind and your and your gut have been impacted as well. I mean, when you when you're running a program for so long, can't you see how you can get your heart and gut behind that program, those concepts? So this means that our intuitions may be off and in fact may be causing us to lack forward movement. Now I'm just going under the assumption that people want forward movement. So perhaps we're making poor judgment calls. So that's, that's the space that I, I get in because it's like, it's kind of like those moments where you feel like you put your foot in your mouth, right? Did that come from your mind or did that come from a gut feeling? Have you ever made like a knee jerk reaction or a gut feeling and ended up with your foot in your mouth or made a bad judgment call? And of course that always leads to the obstacle of the way. We always want to look and reference the fact that, you know, sometimes going through the struggle, embracing the suck is the way, but still, you know, we always want to refine this. So perhaps we're making poor judgment calls based on these intuitions. So this brings up an interesting thing to become conscious of and catching in our interface response system. Remember the IRS, the interface response system, which is a big, big dragon thing, is just this idea of being conscious of the way we interface and respond with things, which is what it is that we're in control. So we always want to work on that. So what we're entertaining right now is what degree do our intuitions play in that response system? And also, are they connected to false pretenses that are part of that programming? So we speak a lot about our programmed analytical mind and how it consciously calls the shots, often basing decisions on information that was given to us, like I said before, from the outside in, from what I call MFTPS. And intuition shows up as a primer and practice ground for such decisions. Let's think about what that means. When I have an intuition, an intuition comes before the response, right? You get that feeling. So what I'm saying is, is an intuition shows up as a primer and is in the practice ground, the sandbox for the decisions that we make. So if you can catch yourself and become conscious of the intuition and what it's connected to and potentially the outside forces or the program that created it, maybe we can make different decisions. Imagine if you started to just pause and take a second to evaluate your intuition rather than just going with it. Because the way I was brought up, and it was great, it got me where I, where I am today, but I was always brought up, go with your gut. What does your gut tell you? So I don't want you to be afraid of failing and there's no, it's, it's not about like perfecting the response system. It's just about becoming conscious, right? So I started to evaluate if my intuitions and my gut feeling were affected by my program. So an intuition shows up as a primer and a practice ground for such decisions. We are unpacking this today in the rise up as becoming conscious of our intuitions and where they were generated can help us, as I used to say, hashtag suffer less. So that's the goal, not to be free of suffering, but just suffer less and break through to new levels of consistency and follow through. So just as a quick reminder, this is a Rise Up With Dragon show. And uh, for those of you that are watching it live or watching it as a video, we always open up our clubhouse room at Makes Sense, two S's in the middle, for an after party. So follow me at Makes Sense and you can join that. And we always discuss this topic at the end. So back to intuitions and the illusion behind it. Our intuitions, right or wrong, were shaped via natural selection to quickly provide life-saving information to help us survive and thrive. Now, check that out. Now, natural selection is something that, you know, whether we like it or not, we're all kind of looking to do what we do 
to move forward and evolve as a human race. That's what natural selection is. It's only the strong survive. So what I'm saying is, is intuitions, you know, I, I love to forgive myself for I know not what I do. So what I'm saying is, is these intuitions are not your fault. In fact, most of the time we don't even know that they're going on. We just assume that we have this like internal decision-making process that works. So our intuitions, whether they're right or wrong, were shaped because and via natural selection to give you the ability. It's like a fight or flight thing, right? Your intuitions play into fight or flight. They were, they're there to help us quickly provide life-saving information, potentially, to help us either survive or thrive. So if we're not moving forward towards our desired goals and states, it's a good practice to become conscious of where these reality-changing intuitions were generated. That's all I want to talk about today. I just want to just, when you, when you have an intuition, I just want you to say, where'd that come from? Is that my intuition or is this just an, a reflection of my, my programming? So if they're part of this programming from your MFTPS, mother, father, teacher, preacher, and society, aka the highlight reel, or whatever you're consuming, they may not serve you and may generate distractions. Now, we're going to be talking to Nir IL about distractions and becoming indistractable, but what an interesting concept to look at. I mean, I always like to check the facts. If you look at the past year, have you been moving forward? And how and what role have your intuitions played in that? So a lot of the times we, we get into this forward moving, you know, um, focus, but we, 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 we fail to look back and say, is my system that I'm using to try to move forward, is it working? Definition of insanity, trying to get different results doing the same thing. So if you've come this far and you're not happy with it and you're not making progress and you look back and say, I've been going with my gut. I've been going with my intuitions. I'm not saying stop doing that, but check it, check it, unpack it. So if these intuitions are part of your program for your MFTPS, they may not serve you and may generate distractions, false evidence appearing real, and trigger beliefs that carry hidden barriers as well. Now remember, and this is the work from Gay Hendricks in his book, uh, The Big Leap, massive, massive shift for the dragon. Um, he talks about hidden barriers and a hidden barrier is something, you know, when you, you know that you have a hidden barrier or an upper limit problem when you go so far and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, just find yourself stopping, you know, and you come up with great excuses, but a hidden barrier is just like this limit. You only let yourself get so far before you come back. Maybe your intuitions play a role in that. I'll give you an example. So let's say that your hidden barrier is that success comes at the expense of being overwhelmed. So what that means is as soon as you feel overwhelmed, you will recoil, take things off your plate. Very often you'll take the very things that were set on your plate to move you forward. You'll take them off your plate first because of your the, the sense that you're overwhelmed. So where does this sense of overwhelm come from? Because what you learn once you push through overwhelm is that the obstacle is the way and, you know, to do the hard work and be consistent and follow through, that's where success comes from. But if you're recoiling when you have overwhelm, that means that at some, at some stage in this process of perceiving all that's going on, you get this gut feeling or you get this sense, this feeling, this sixth sense, or just some sort of feeling that you're overwhelmed. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe the challenge is that moment where you perceive that you're overwhelmed. And what's interesting about that is when I look at two different people, I see how they both react to this perceived overwhelm. One of them, when they get overwhelmed and they recoil, that's why it's called a hidden barrier. Well, of course they don't move forward. They're trying to get into town in a rocking chair. But then I see the other person that ends up succeeding. I mean, there's, there's, this is not brain science here. You know, I mean, if, if people follow through and then they realize that being overwhelmed is part of moving forward because it's uncomfortable and we know where growth takes place. So very, very fascinating to look at that. So often we need to catch this drifting, right? And when we catch ourselves drifting, it unveils shifting into a new reality where we practice and work 
on a new belief system. Now, remember, we talk a lot about the fact that beliefs don't have much to do with success, right? A lot of people base their ability to move forward on motivation, timing, and beliefs. But your belief system plays a role in you getting started. So if you make a decision that you want something and you put a high value to it, but you believe that you need to have belief and timing and, and motivation and stuff, well, then, yeah, there is value in creating a shift in your belief system. And very often it just, a shift in your belief system could just be recognizing what it is that you're potentially doing wrong or where you're getting caught up. So a new belief system and response system, as I said before, that serve us better for both survival, because we still need to be able to survive, right? If, if, I, if I get an awkward feeling because a, a bank is about to be robbed and I get out of there and I prevent myself from being part of it, that's a good, that's a good intuition. I'm, just, I'm not saying intuitions are bad. I'm just saying maybe they are a reflection and a side effect and a symptom of your programming. So better for survival or, like I say, thrivival. It's not a word, but it's a dragon word. So I like to follow my gut and my heart, not my thoughts as they are largely representing my outside in programming from all these years of consumption of just stuff that's not really mine. My heart and gut more accurately and reflect, you know, with purity, less opinions impacted by my thoughts. So I do like to go to my heart and gut. However, I believe even our heart and gut, although more accurate, so it's better to go with your heart and gut, but even though they're still impacted and manipulated and programmed over time by the power of repetitions. And I keep talking about this ad nauseum so that you can become conscious of it. So it's really, really crucial that we practice mindfulness, awareness, and consciousness of the outside in programming. Just start with that. Just start asking, is this thought, is this gut feeling, is this intuition, part of a symptom or a side effect uh, by that from that outside in programming when we're sensing our intuitions and they may in fact not be yours but somebody else's so that's my rise up today about intuitions and my goal when i bring up these words and these concepts which come to me remember what i do every day is i write these down and that's how I explained it to myself selfishly. It's not like I'm preparing them for my podcast or my show. I'm doing it because when I see that word and I think about intuition, I just go, huh, I wonder if that's the way, that's the way my thought is. So I start to write about it. And I'll, as I always say, and I teach, when you start to journal about ideas like that, about four or five sentences in, you start to break things down and really start to see them in different ways, holographically, you know, you start to say, Hey, maybe this, maybe that, what if this, what if that? So when I take them and I share them with you, just as I have right now, and then I'm going to go and potentially interact with people on a concept, guess what happens to me? What happens to me in that moment is I come to a whole new level. So not only did I think about it, not only did I journal about it, but I just talked about it. And it's even better when I have an interview or I speak to people in Clubhouse about it because it just enhances and gives us different perspectives and it helps us own it. So that's why I always say at the end of all my rise ups, if you learn something today, give it away. That's how it's going to stay. So I love and appreciate you. I wish you nothing but a day of being in control of your interface response system. And just remember, what everybody else thinks is none of your business if you're in the business of having a good day. So I love and appreciate you. Have an amazing day. And we will go say hi to some clubhouse friends.